Now we're going to name ionic bonds. So I've created a flow chart naming, and we've broken it into two, how to name ionic bonds and how to name covalent bonds. Right now we're going to focus on ionic bonds. Now this is really important. Ionic bonds happen between a metal and a non-metal. The metals are on the left-hand side of the periodic table, non-metals are on the right-hand side of the periodic table, separated by metal weights, our semi-metals. There are really three situations that you're going to run into when you're naming. So here's the first one and the most basic. Uh, when you're naming uh, monoatomic ions that come together, so a metal and a non-metal, uh, here's the first thing you do. Number one, say the metal's name. And I'm going to use an example with this. Uh, let's take a CaF2. So first thing I'm going to do is say the metal's name, calcium. Next, you simply say the non-metal's name, but change the ending to ide, I-D-E. The non-metal's name, change the ending to I-D-E. So I look, I have fluorine, it's a non-metal, so I'm going to say fluorine and change that ending to I-D-E, which is fluoride. There we have it, calcium fluoride. Let's do another one. Let's take Al2S3. Okay, so I say the metal's name, aluminum. And then I say the non-metal's name, which is going to be sulfide. Instead of sulfur, it's sulfide. Now, there's something that I'm hoping that you've noticed. We don't tell the reader the subscripts. The reader knows enough about the periodic table that they can figure out what the chemical formula is just by knowing the name. Let me show you on the aluminum sulfide. Um, so you watch the video on how to write ionic compounds by crossing down charges. Well, if you're given the name, just go backwards, cross the charges back up and you'll find the um, original ion. Here we go. So aluminum sulfide, um, I would write down, let's see, I write down Al3 plus for the aluminum and sulfide would be S minus two. So I cross those charges down and we get Al2S3. There is your aluminum sulfide. Now, if we wanted to know the original charges, okay, what the original ions were, all you do is cross those numbers back up. So three was originally on the aluminum and two was original, originally on the sulfide. Um, this shows us, um, as a reminder, metals are always written first and they're always cations, they're always the positive, and then the non-metal is always written second and it's the anion. It's the one that uh, gained the electrons and has the negative charge on it. Okay, let's go to the second situation. This is if you have metals that are in the transition block, okay? The D block, they're transition metals. It begins the same. First thing that you're going to do is say the metal's name. And let's do an example with this one too. This time we're going to use a copper and let's see, let's do a bromine with it. C-R, C-U-B-R-2. C-R, that might be hard to read. C-U-B-R-2, there we go. Copper is a transition metal. So I'm going to do the first thing, say its name, copper. Now, second step, this is the new step. Transition metals can have different charges and we have to tell the reader what was the original charge on that copper ion. To do this, we're going to cross the charges back up like I just showed you. Um, so I'm going to take that two 
pull that up here. There's understood to be a one subscript on the copper. Pull that to the bromine, which means that was originally a Cu2 plus and a Br minus one. Oh, I see it. The copper was a plus two charge. So the way you write this is Roman numerals. It's called the stock system. You'll say copper two. And that tells the reader that this has a two plus charge. Now notice, I'm not telling the reader the subscript. I'm not telling the reader how many coppers there are. I'm telling the reader the charge. And that's a common mistake that students will make. They'll go, oh, it's a copper one because I have one copper. No, that's not it. You're trying to tell uh, the reader the original charge, that it was a copper two plus, and then those charges cross down. Second, or excuse me, so let's write down number two. State the metal charge, and you're going to use Roman numerals. Now, our last step, really easy, is what we did over here. You simply take the nonmetal, that bromine, change the ending to ide. So this is going to be copper 2 bromide. Notice that IDE, we don't say bromine, we say bromide. So step three right here, you say, I'll do NM for the nonmetal, but you change the ending to IDE right there. Okay, our last situation. And this is actually the easiest out of all of them. It is when you have a polyatomic with a metal. Do you know what you do? Say the metal name and you say the polyatomic, you're done. Uh, so let's write this down. We're going to say the metal. And number two, we're going to say the polyatomic. You don't have to change anything. Don't change anything at all. So let's take SrNO32. I'm going to first say the metal's name, strontium. Now I say the non-metal. The non-metal is the polyatomic, it's that whole group. So you'd have to look it up on a table or maybe you have it memorized. NO3 is called nitrate. So this is strontium nitrate. And again, I don't have to tell the reader what this looks like because I know that they know strontium is a two plus and nitrate is a minus one. Cross down those charges, boom, there you have it, strontium nitrate. Now there is one addition to this, one little disclaimer. If you have a metal that's a transition metal with a polyatomic, you still say the metal, say the polyatomic, but you do have to include the Roman numeral. So let's say that we have Fe, uh, let's see here, what should we do? Let's do, I'm gonna change it up just a tiny bit, FeNO2 with a two, like that. So this is called iron, and this is called a nitrite, nitrite. Uh, iron is a transition metal, and I have to tell the reader what its original charge was. So again, we're going to cross those charges back up. I have an understood one on this iron. Cross that back up. That means iron was originally a two, a plus two charge. The nitrite, NO2 minus one, and that is true. Nitrite is a minus one. So let's go through the steps. Say the metal's name, iron. I have to tell the reader what the original charge was. It was a two, so I put that in Roman numerals. Lastly, I state the polyatomic, which is nitrite. Iron, two, nitrite. And there we have it. So there is ionic naming.